The Biden administration has been going to phone companies and trying to get private text messages censored, at least according to multiple reports we've seen in the past week or so. The idea is they must stop the spread of misinformation and disinformation, which are similar but different. I guess disinformation is when you're lying on purpose and misinformation is when you're just wrong. But who says they're right? Therein lies the big problem. What we're now learning is that not only are they going to private phone companies, but they're essentially colluding with big tech. It's not really the first time we've heard this, but Jen Psaki in a press conference said that they are flagging misinformation for Facebook. That's right. So let me just stress, as we've talked about this a little bit before, this story in particular, the government can't go to a private company and say, shut down the speech of American citizens. That would be like, say, you know, some people are arguing, but it's a private company. They can do what they want. The government can't hire private security to go and shut down a church. That would be a violation of First Amendment rights. They can't do that. That's effectively what they're doing right now with going to Facebook and going through our text messages. But now it's it shows you just how brazen they've become and how alarming things really are, because when they say disinformation about COVID vaccine, what they're really saying is dissident voices and opinions that are contrary to the establishment. The problem with that? Well, I certainly have my criticisms of conspiracy theorists and crackpots and wingnuts, and I certainly have my disagreements with Brett Weinstein and Dr. Chris Martinson, noting they're both scientists and I'm not, and I can respect that. That's why we have that conversation. But that's basically it. We have the conversation to go through these disagreements, go through the information and make our points. The establishment wants to shut down anyone who criticizes them. But who says they are right? If they are but people, then certainly they could be producing the same misinformation as everybody else. This is why censorship is such an awful, horrible thing. And it's why it's uh, bringing us down a dark path. But there is some hope. You see, there's something called the Freedom Phone that's been sweeping the country, trending on Twitter with many conservative personalities saying the Freedom Phone is the answer. And all of a sudden, there is this very strange kickback campaign, mainstream media saying it's a cheap Chinese knockoff. It's not a real Freedom Phone. And they're laughing and they're saying this is so dumb and it doesn't work. And these 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 cartoon avatars pop up on Twitter saying I'm actually a hacker and this phone's terrible. And I'm like, um, as someone who actually is a hacker, me, uh, I have not actually seen any seen any real arguments against what Freedom Phone is trying to do. While I can certainly criticize some of what's happening, it's really strange to me how many people have come up and said, "Don't don't buy this this product." And I'm kind of like, seems like he's providing a service. I think we'll need some forensic analysis to back up the claims he's making. But I certainly don't think this gentleman who's produced this censorship free phone is defrauding people. But a lot of people are saying that he is. And we even have Robbie Suave over at uh, Reason, who's also calling it snake oil, but hasn't actually provided me with an argument as to what's wrong with this device. I look at what's going on in the mainstream. We've got one story, FB over a Facebook oversight member saying that free speech isn't a human right. Okay, let me tell you something. I'm personally probably not going to buy a freedom phone. Why? Because I know how to build my own phones and install my own operating systems, and I can build a lot of my own stuff. And I, I typically always have. I'm not super concerned about that stuff right now. I've just got a bunch of Android phones and like an iPhone. But if I was going to build a secure system, or if I wanted a secure system, I'd build one myself. But can we expect regular people to challenge the establishment knowing how to build a phone or, or, or create an operating system? No. So if somebody came out and said they were an offer one, I think it makes sense. These two stories clash. And that's why I find it so interesting that a time when we're learning the White House is colluding with big tech and phone companies to censor our speech. You have this guy coming out saying, well, here's a phone that won't do that. And he gets attacked relentlessly, even by some elements of the right which I find fascinating. But we're going to have to go through all this and break down what it all really means. What the White House is doing is serious. It's dark stuff. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com and become a member to get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast, as well as you'll, you'll be supporting our new newsroom, which should be launching. Hopefully, it's all coming out Monday. I know I've said that in the past, and it always gets delayed, so, you know, bear with me. But our, our target is a Monday for our uh, beta, a public—I'll I'll call it a public beta because we're in alpha. We're going we're gonna to publish 
tons of news articles. I think we've got like six or seven writers. We're going to be adding way more doing real journalism on a variety of subjects, not just politics, not just culture war, just things we think are generally interesting, of which will be news, you know, culture and politics. But don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel, share this video. And uh, hopefully that's the way to overcome uh, sharing is the way to overcome the censorship. We know that Facebook is going after what they call disinformation. We know that it's basically anti-establishment narratives. We know those narratives typically come from conservatives. We know that there was one study which suggested that the people described as anti-vaxxer are actually well-informed. And we know that Merriam-Webster recently changed the definition of anti-vaxxer to somebody who opposed mandating vaccines. If they can shut down the lines of communication, They can solidify control, but these people are not gods. They are not geniuses. They are just regular people and they want power. Centralized power doesn't work. To a certain degree, you need a mix, a nucleus, decentralized components, but they're trying to seize it all. Here's the story. Now, I have talked about this a little bit, but there are some developments. So let's go. Let's let's break this down. White House admits it is flagging problematic posts and, they, and the Daily Mail says to Facebook, no, Jen Psaki said for Facebook, uh, to Facebook, they believe spread disinformation about the COVID vaccine, sparking Glenn Greenwald to call the move a hallmark of fascism. Psaki's comments during Thursday's press briefing after the U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Vivek Murthy said health misinformation is a serious threat to public health. During her comments, Psaki said the White House, the White House has increased disinformation tracking and is working with Facebook and popular influencers who can get accurate information out to the public. Among the critics who lashed out against the White House on Twitter and other social media outlets was journalist Glenn Greenwald, who said the union of corporate and state power is one of the classic hallmarks of fascism. That is true, though. Typical academic definitions of fascism say authoritarian, traditionalist nationalism. The main difference between fascism and communism in my opinion, is progressivism versus traditionalism. If you look back at what happened in Europe uh, pre-World War II, the fascists tended to be like, we need traditional values and an iron fist. And the communists tended to be like, we need to erase the traditions with an iron fist. And the communists were rather successful in certain areas and less successful in others. And we got a long, fascism was defeated, but then we got a long period of communism. That seems to be what they're doing. In an eight tweet thread posted Thursday afternoon, Greenwald said this idea that a president's administration can remove content it deems problematic is dangerous. Quote, if you don't find it deeply disturbing, the White House is flagging Internet content they deem problematic to their Facebook allies for removal. Then you are definitionally an authoritarian. No other information is needed about you to know that uh, Greenwald tweeted. There are hundreds of reactions to his thread and opinions have been split. When boiled down to their simplest forms, people arguing for cracking down on medical misinformation say it's important to get correct information to the public to save lives. Others argue that outlets like Facebook shouldn't be an arm of the government and have no right to ban or censor dissenting voices. The government doesn't have a right to do that. We have the First Amendment. It's fascinating that they use public health as an excuse to violate the First Amendment. And they're going to try and do the violate the Second Amendment and the Fourth and the Fifth, etc. They go on to say, Dan Gaynor, of Media Research Center also ripped into Saki and the White House team by tweeting, being anti-vaccine is part of free speech. Pressak is against freedom. Unfortunately, it's true. It is. I don't like, well, let's be careful here. They changed the definition of anti-vaxxer. I don't like people who uh, uh, reject science, reject, reject technological progress. And there's a lot of people that I talk to about vaccines and there's all those videos of the magnets on people's arms. And I'm like, dude, there are legitimate concerns. But when you come out with this crackpot, crazy magnet brainwave chip stuff, you make it really difficult to have legitimate conversations about what's happening in the medical field. But who the is are these celebrities to come out and tell you what medication you should be taking? Always. You will hear me say it a million times. I had someone say, Tim, I swear, if you say talk to your doctor one more time, bro, I'm not going to get sued by you or anybody else because I gave someone advice on medical practices. It's the stupidest thing ever. Don't. I hear a lot of people say, but my doctor isn't. Well, talk to a different doctor. Okay. But anyway, I digress. People are allowed to have those conversations. So so Dr. Uh, uh, Brett Weinstein, brilliant man. He's been talking about a bunch of things on his podcast and YouTube's taken him down for it. 
talking about alternative uh, things that he thinks are alternative uh, alternative treatments. We'll be careful here because YouTube will censor. And I actually disagree with him to a certain extent, though the critics of him are acting like he should be banned or censored or he's insane. I'm like, he's actually an evolutionary biologist and he knows a lot more than I do about this stuff. But I do think there's some political components here. And I and I do think I am entitled to my opinion based on my research, though I defer to smarter people, typically and the experts. I talked to Dr. Chris Martinson, a pathologist who has been talking, who has been outspoken for some time about what's been going on with COVID. And we had a conversation at Timcast IRL in the members only podcast uh, where I actually pulled up studies that disagreed with what he said. And I said, I don't I think you, you, you have your opinion, but you've got conflicting studies here. So the point is, the conversations need to happen if people are going to have a reasonable approach to this. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me explain a little bit more. Dr. Chris Martinson said, there are studies that say X. And I said, that's interesting. How many? He said 53. And I said, well, here are some studies that, uh, that, that contradict those studies. And he said, well, those studies, you know, uh, those are no good studies. But then I found other reports that said the studies he said were no good as well. And I said, listen, if I can pull up studies that agree with you and disagree with you, I think ultimately it's hard for people to figure out what's true and what's not. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm telling people you need to get multiple opinions from medical professionals about what you should do. But it's that conversation that needs to happen so that people take responsibility for themselves and stop acting like I should be the one to tell them what to do or anybody else, be it Dr. Fauci or Rogan or whoever should tell them what to do. If you censor the information, you are going to hurt people. You shouldn't be going to a 7-Eleven to get a medical treatment. You shouldn't be drunk at a bar and people should not be going door to door. You should have a list of when I, when I go to the dentist and they're like, please check off every any ailment you might have in your family because then they're like, OK, here's what I can't prescribe you. So it's 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 the same problem that they're claiming they're they're shutting down. Jen Tech is like, we're getting rid of misinformation. You are also promoting it. So therein lies the big problem. They're going to mention John Cooper said, Jen Psaki says the Biden administration is actively flagging what they deem disinformation about the pandemic to Facebook for censoring. Could you imagine cigarettes, for instance, if, they, if, if the government was like, they're totally fine and we're going to ban anybody who says otherwise? Not not ever. Look, there are people who are showing this video. I've, I've seen a tweet of um, it's gone around quite a bit of Leonard Nimoy talking about global cooling. And they're like, ah, the experts are wrong. And I'm like, yeah, the experts are always wrong. Like not always, always, but Typically, as we learn new things, our opinions change. That's true for me on political issues, and it's true for science. We get things wrong. We try to figure them out. That's the problem of absolutism and the problem of censorship. If someone says X is the truth, and then you censor anyone who comes out against X, well, then X is solidified, and we won't be able to progress and actually solve these problems. We cannot allow the government to do this. I hope they get sued over this, but you'll need standing, which means someone's going to have to have their post removed, I suppose, which could really mean anybody who posts anything that goes in violation of Facebook's guidelines could theoretically file a suit. But then how do you know if the White House were actually the ones who censored you or told Facebook to censor you? It's tough. Now, I want to stress something. This is outright against conservatives, okay? And I don't, I'm not going to say absolutely, but it is against conservatives. This is basically the White House admitting the government is censoring mostly conservative voices. There's a few stories that you, that you need to understand. To take, to, uh, take a look at this. CNN says, Tennessee controversy shows how anti-vax beliefs are bursting into GOP's mainstream. Well, as we know, Merriam-Webster defines anti-vax as opposing mandatory vaccination or effectively vaccine pass- passports. There are many conservatives who oppose mandatory vaccination. That makes them anti-vax. That is a, that is a, a, a Republican that is typically uh, found on the Republican side or the right uh, of the culture war, not the left. The media is outright saying that it's the right who are anti-vax. And when they say they're flagging misinformation, you don't even know exactly what it is they're flagging. Don't give the government that power. But the culture war left is more than happy to accept that the censorship will persist. FB, a Facebook oversight member, says free speech is not an absolute human right. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. It is. It absolutely is. And people need to speak up, even if they have bad opinions, so we can figure out what works and what doesn't and actually progress. But you know what's funny? They call the, 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 they, they call people like me reactionary, opposing progress in the revolution. 
These are the people who want who want everything to stay the same. They're trying to rewind the clock on civil rights and go back to segregation. They're trying to shut down speech that we don't progress anymore. And they call themselves progressives. No, they're very conservative. And I mean that somewhat facetiously. The people in history say, stop. No, they're reactionary. They want to go back to the way things were. Now, something interesting is happening. While the government is doing this, while the, criti- while the critics are saying that the GOP is anti-vax, it all starts to tie together with another story. Freedom Phone. On Twitter, Candace Owens. Candace Owens has a substantial amount of followers, 2.7 million. She is, is, is no C-lister. She is the A-lister of the, of the political uh, conservative movement. And there was a poll recently that found, I think she, she had uh, fifth place in terms of who should run for president. People really like Candace Owens, conservatives, I should say. She tweeted, I just did a live on Instagram, taking everyone through the new Freedom Phone, which is now trending. So excited that I partnered with a solution against Apple and Google. Use code Candace for 10% off your new phone. And I see, I, I, like Jack, Jack Posobiec, I think has one. He's like, use, use code POSO for your Freedom Phone. Now, I like the idea. I've met the guy from Freedom, Freedom Phone. In fact, he was actually at my house at one point. He was here with one of our other guests, and we passively talked about this. Not a whole much more than that. It's an interesting idea. He calls it Uncensorable Freedom Phone. This is their website, freedomphone.com. The Freedom Phone is a free speech and privacy first focused phone with features like tracking blockers and an uncensorable app store. And that's basically it. Not a whole lot of information about what this phone is, what it does, what the specs are, how good's the camera, the processor. These are things I typically want to know before I buy a device. And I have tons of devices because I actually have, uh, we've developed, I've developed a couple different apps back in the day. Mostly they're on hiatus, kind of just frozen in place. I've also hacked several phones to run. I say hack, but I've done a bunch of weird things with phones, hacked a bunch of crazy tech. Uh, I used to work very heavily in mobile technology. So I want to know about the details. What I can say is, all right, if you want to provide a service to regular people who aren't familiar with how to produce, uh, 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 how to, to break into a phone or how to install a new operating system that can be more secure, this is the easiest way to do it. Makes sense to me. I haven't actually gone through any forensic analysis of these phones. I can't vet. I can't vouch for them. I don't know. But you know what? Somebody's making a phone that's not Apple or Google. It's going to have its own app store. Cool. Cool. We'll come back to this concept in just a second because I want to show you what happened with the media. All of a sudden, this is what we see. The Daily Beasts. Will Summer. Ah, yes. Ever the great uh, technologist. He writes, MAGA World's Freedom Phone actually budget Chinese phone. MAGA influencers are pushing a phone preloaded with apps like Parler and Rumble that appears to be a vastly more expensive version of a phone made in China. Now, what's interesting is people are sharing this. It's this article is going pretty viral where they're laughing at conservatives. And I don't see anything in this article that actually in any way suggests the phone is not good. I mean, maybe you don't want to use a phone that's made in China. As the founder of Freedom Phone stated on on, uh, Twitter, there's like no real American facility for producing a phone. And he says the phone is not made in mainland China, though it appears the phone is actually a reskinned version of a piece of Chinese hardware. Still, I don't know if that matters. But let's read the story and talk about they're really going after this. I got to say, I think Freedom Phone is over target. I got to go through the specs. I'm, I want to have a forensic analysis of this. I want to check for data leakage. I want to I want to see if uh, do some tests to see if it's uh, actually tracking you. Take a look at their capabilities and um, and then give my actual review or assessment on what this phone is. I haven't done it yet. So I find it so fascinating that so many people on Twitter are are attacking it relentlessly and that so many news outlets have actually written about this. But wait, it's worse than just this one hit piece. You know, we're talking about censorship and anti-vaxxers and all that stuff, right? Take a look at this from the Washington Post. What the freedom, what the freedom phone and the rights anti-vax campaign have in common. (laughs) What? Here we go. Full circle, baby. That's right. Because when they say anti-vax, they're talking about run-of-the-mill conservatism. They're talking about regular people who are questioning law and vaccine passport. They're using anti-vax to refer to anyone who is talking specifically about mRNA and nothing. It's it's, it's a political term that doesn't really mean what people think it means. And I don't even know what they're trying to convey in this other than they're trying to link the freedom phone to anti-vax. Wow. Freedom phone over target. Much. 
Take a look at this first story from the Daily Beast. Will Sommer writes, the pro-Trump internet went wild on Wednesday for the Freedom Phone, a $500 smartphone that comes stocked with conservative apps and promises to liberate anyone else who buys it from Silicon Valley, who, who, who buys it from Silicon Valley censorship, to liberate you from it. The American flag branded phone was immediately promoted by a wide range of right wing figures, including Roger Stone, Ellie Alexander and Dinesh D'Souza. Quote, I'm holding a freaking phone that is not controlled by Apple or Google. Conservative personality Candace Owens told her fans in an Instagram video. We made the switch immediately. I just want to point out that there are a ton of phones that are not controlled by Apple or Google. There are a lot of Chinese ones and there's, a, there's phones in other countries too, but I digress. Despite being lauded by some of the right wing, right wing media's leading figures, though, the Freedom Phone's buyers could be getting less than they expect for its $500 price tag. That's because the Freedom Phone appears to, to be merely a more expensive rebranding of a budget Chinese phone available elsewhere for a fraction of the Freedom Phone's price. The Freedom Phone was created by Eric Finman, the self-proclaimed youngest Bitcoin millionaire and one of Time Magazine's most influential teens of 2014. In a video announcing the phone, Finman said he was inspired to create the phone after the tech giants cracked down on both Donald Trump and conservative social media app Parler in the wake of January 6 uh, of the January 6 riot. Imagine if Mark Zuckerberg censored MLK or Abraham Lincoln, Finman said in the video. Now, I want to pause for a second and go over some of what he said. Notice at the beginning of the article, this is how Will Summer uh, uh, lies. It's, it's, it's a framing device. He says the phone's buyers could be getting less than they expect. What do they expect? The Freedom OS, which he's offered the uncensorable app store, which he's offered, and a phone, which he's offered. If people want to buy that for $500, they made that choice. I'm fine with it. Acting like the phone exists from a Chinese manufacturer. When, when, what he's doing is, hey, look, there's another version of this phone that's cheaper. Sure, but it's not the Freedom Phone. It's not running the preloaded apps, which I get you can download yourself. It's not running his specific app store. I guess you could install some other app store. And it's not running his operating system. I guess you could install your own, your, your own operating system if you want to use like Graphene OS or something else. Or there's somebody who's offered up a service where he's preloaded all of those things so you don't have to learn how to do it yourself. I don't understand. What's the criticism? The hardware was made by a Chinese company? Yeah. Android, uh, many Android phones are made in China, and you've got uh, very few of the phones actually made in the U.S. I don't think I don't think at scale they make any in the U.S. for the most part. There's probably some small ones. He goes on to say, Freedom Phone's website is nearly totally devoid of technical information about the device. Finman declares, that the, declares in the promotional video that the Freedom Phone is comparable to the best smartphones on the market and truly is the best phone in the world. I mean, that's an opinion. In fact, Freedom Phone appears to be a simple rebranding of a budget phone called the Umi Digi A9 Pro, made by the Chinese tech company Umi Digi. In an interview with the Daily Beast, Finman confirmed the Freedom Phone was manufactured by Umi Digi, but didn't say immediately which Umi Digi phone it was based on. Well, it could be that it is an Umi Digi phone, but it's not the A9 Pro. It's just a similar model with different specs. The Freedom Phone's $500 price tag would represent a substantial markup on the Umi Digi A9 Pro. That phone is available on Chinese retail giant AliExpress for $120, less than one quarter of the price of a Freedom Phone. And this is why this article is a smear. If you bought the Umidigi Chinese, you know, A9 Pro for 120 bucks, you're not getting access to the things that he's offering, Freedom OS and the store. I'm not saying those things are actually worth, worth what he's charging it for, but he's selling something different. Based on what, what Eric Finman has said, it seems like they've built their own operating system. I don't see the issue. Other than the Daily Beast and many left-wing media outlets are trying to make it seem like the phone is a bad idea or a waste of money. And you've even got people like, you know, I was tweeting with Rabe Suave of, of Reason.com, Libertarian, and he said it was snake oil. And I said, that's not a response to what I said. Basically, there's a thread where he called it a grift and said the grifters are selling the grift phone. And then I said, oh, geez, you know, an article from famed techno lauded technologist and, and expert on the far, 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 far right, Will Summer. Yeah, I immediately question the Freedom Phone when he writes about it. Robbie's response was that he's criticized Summer in the past, but you can't disregard relevant information for political reasons. And I said, what information? I said, the real issue is whether or not data leaks from the phone and whether or not it's tracking you. If they offer you a product that they've customized and built things into, it doesn't matter if the base model costs something else. That's ridiculous. It's like someone selling you a rock, but then so, it, I'll put it this way. Someone is selling a piece of canvas with a picture on it. But did you know that the canvas only cost $5? 
Well, maybe I don't want a blank canvas. Maybe I want the fancy picture of the sailboat by the lighthouse. Someone had to paint the boat and the lighthouse. It's a different product. So it's fascinating then when the response I got was, Tim, it's snake oil. And I said, that's not a response to what I just said. See, this is the problem. There's so many people who just want to play that contradictory game. I don't know if the phone's fantastic. I haven't done a forensic analysis of of it. We haven't put any, any, any apps on it to see where data is being leaked to. We don't know for sure. Supposedly, you can get the phone, you can put your SIM card in it, it works. But boy, are they mad about it. So when I can see the Biden administration saying we're going to censor information, and then I can see some guy saying, here's a phone that, that doesn't do that, I say, okay. And then when I see the, the hysteria over this phone, but it's clever. They're not coming out and pointing out actual technical defects. They're mocking it as dumb. They don't want people to use it to be embarrassed or whatever. Yeah, I don't base my decisions off whether or not someone else will you know, laugh at me or not. Obviously, there's a lot of people on the left and the right who laugh at me. I really don't care. Life's pretty good over at TimCast.com and the compound, and we're going to keep expanding. So a lot of people, you can say a lot of things about a lot of things, and I'm going to keep doing my thing. And I'll tell you this, the hate on Freedom Phone seemingly makes no sense for a device that hasn't even been tested or legitimately reviewed yet because it's not out. I'd love to get it, have one of my, my tech experts run through it and give me an actual technical uh, assessment of the device. Personally, I wouldn't use it. You know why? Not because I think it's a bad device, because like I said in the earlier in earlier in the segment, I can take a phone and personally, I can rip that thing to shreds software wise and put whatever I want on it. I've done some really cool stuff. I, I, I there, there's one I, I made a phone that looked like a pit boy from Fallout. So when like you load it up, it's really cool. I, I, I love that stuff. And then I was showing my friend, look, it's like a pit boy. Look what I did. I put in this. I, I put an operating system in these apps on it. And uh, we've done a bunch of cool stuff with live streaming technology and manipulating these phones. So for me personally, if I want to be secure, I'm going to do it myself. But here's the issue. He goes on, and, and I think the analogy about a painting probably makes the most sense. The base model is $120, and he's selling it for $500. And yeah, if someone took a rock and then chiseled it to make the shape of a little Easter Island head, that'd be worth more money too. Someone did work, applied it to a product. What's with the weird hit piece? Now, some people have pointed out that the chipset is easily hackable if you have physical access. And I'm like, okay, all phones are hackable if you have physical access. They're called O-Day exploits or zero-day exploits. I'm sure many people in the government have the ability to hack into a lot of phones. There's been reporting that the FBI was able to break into iPhones, apparently. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they were able to break in. And Android devices tend to be a little bit easier because there's so many different versions of Android devices. But in the end, yeah, if your phone gets stolen, you're in trouble. If you have the phone on you and it's not censoring you, it's not tracking you, then you've got what you've paid for. Now, take a look at this. This right here should show you, man, this op-ed. Freedom phones over Target. They're trying to lump it in with anti-vax when literally it's just a guy being like, you should be able to have free speech like the Constitution says. And they're like, no, 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 it's bad. It's a Chinese phone. It's snake oil, Tim. That doesn't mean anything. Does the phone work? Okay, whatever. Now, look, I certainly think if you have the opportunity, don't make stuff out of China. <clears throat> it's not so easy all the time. But, um, you know, in the United States, I've been looking into manufacturing in a, to a certain extent, and it's really difficult. We might do our own prototyping and stuff with 3D printer and then actually make some base components for some stuff we want to build. But it's not easy. It's not. At the very least, if this guy can get out a phone that will give people the ability to, com- to communicate uncensored, that's a network that I think is worth building. I'm always worried about this stuff, though, because there have been instances where you get honeypots. A honeypot is basically a trap, right? Someone will say, hey, check out this phone. It's great. It won't censor you. You get it, and it's tracking everything you're doing. I'll explain it. Uh, I'll break it down. During my days covering all of these protests, which I, I don't do anymore because it's too dangerous, but when I was on the ground, people keep telling me that the government is, sent, is, is, is shutting down the internet, censoring their phones. You'd be at a protest, and then all of a sudden your internet's not working, and they'd be like, the government's jamming our cell phones. And I'm like, no, they aren't. Typically, the government brings in backup cell towers. Trucks will come in with antennas. They want to help you communicate. What's really happening is that you're jamming the service. There's too much trying to get through at any one time, so the data is all cluttered up, and the tower breaks down. You know, you can't get information out of it. The government wants you communicating because they want to be able to spy on you. So censorship is actually bad for intelligence agencies. So the one thing about the Freedom Phone that I would be concerned about is, is it possible that these phones can get intercepted in delivery 
loaded with an O'Day exploit that allows all of your information to be easily spotted and tracked. Maybe. Ultimately, I don't think it matters because I think the NSA has their tendrils into all the phone companies as it is. So it can help bypass apps that use encrypted communications and, and encryption. But I, I, I'm, I'm really not super concerned about that. Overall, I think if you're offering up a service to provide people free speech, it's a good thing. No wonder now they're trying to link it together. Now, you may remember when I said that uh, Kenneth Owens is not a C-list celebrity because this guy for, for Washington Post says C-list conservative celebrities like Candace Owens. I mean, dude, she's like an A-lister, bro. She's a conservative celebrity and she's the top of the top. They say they have endorsed the handset of liberty. Well, he's trying to claim that this has something to do with vaccines. That's where it gets really weird. The vaccines are a perfect example, blah, blah, blah. I, I'm, I'm not super interested in, in, in giving airtime to the absurdity of his argument. But it's part of this, 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 this wave where they're trying to say someone creating a platform with an app store that bestows the values of free speech and classical liberalism is a bad thing. I find that fishy. Maybe you won't use it because it's not convenient, but Apple and Google certainly want control of things. Let me just add w- one final thing. You can get any Android and that you jailbreak them, you root them, you put in a different operating system, you purge them, you, you DOD sweep, whatever you want to call it, just w- wiping all the data off of it. You can then install separate app stores. There are free and open app stores that are not Freedom OS or the uncensored app store. However, it does require hiring someone or knowing how to do it. Most people don't. Freedom Phone can be very, very dangerous for the establishment. So it's no wonder that they're colluding with big tech and then freaking out that a new technology service is becoming available that will stop the censorship. Funny how that works. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up tonight at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.